The last piece of AMD's Ryzen puzzle launched last week with the release of Ryzen 3. The chips that will bring the new Zen architecture to the masses. The Ryzen 3 1300X is a 4 core chip clocked at 3.5 GHz out of the box. But as with both prior Ryzen release cycles this year, I think by far the more interesting option is the SKU that features all of the same specs with slightly lower out of the box clock speeds. The Ryzen 3 1200 comes in at only 110 US dollars and appears to target Intel's Pentium and i3 lines directly, with even an eye on the much more expensive i5s. Does it meet or even exceed its goals? Let's find out. Given my prior experience with the Ryzen 7 line, where I and many other reviewers concluded that the 1700 was far and away the best overall product, and with the Ryzen 5 line, where I think the 1600 has reached a similar consensus, I was confident that taking a closer look at the Ryzen 3 1200 was the right move versus focusing on the more expensive 1300X. Now the x skew chips from AMD are supposed to carry with them boosted clock speeds, higher XFR or extended frequency range, and more headroom for user overclocking, but their overall performance has historically not been that different from the lower end models. Additionally, the lower end chips can be had for significant discounts, and with some tweaking can achieve almost the same levels of performance. Ryzen 3 appears not to deviate from the course too much, as both the 1200 and 1300X are 4 core, 4 thread CPUs with 65 watt TDPs and 2 megs and 8 megs of L2 and L3 cache respectively. The only difference is clock speed, where the 1300X enjoys a 400 megahertz advantage on the base clock and 300 megahertz on the boost clock. The fact that the Ryzen 3 1200 only costs $110 and comes with the surprisingly excellent rate stealth cooler should honestly make Intel nervous, if for no other reason than specs alone. It costs $10 less than Intel's lowest end i3, the 7100, actually sliding right in between that chip and the Pentium G4620 price-wise. To the majority of consumers, price is the single most important factor when choosing parts for the next build. A potential buyer might say to themselves, I have $100 to $120 to spend on a CPU, which one will provide me the best value? For that reason, the 1200 will often be compared to the Pentium or i3. However, when examining the specs of the processor, it actually falls more in step with Intel's i5 lineup, which features four cores and threads the same as Ryzen 3. So is it possible that AMD has actually managed to shoehorn i5 performance into an i3 body? Well, no, not quite. But did they get close enough to make a real impact? Yes, I think they did. A few notes on testing methodology before we dive into all the performance charts. As there are minor differences in the Intel and AMD platforms, I had to standardize the memory speeds between them at something I knew would be achievable for both without any issues or instability. For that reason, all tests were run with a 2x8 gig kit of A-Pacer Panther DDR4-2400. I'll touch on this a little bit more in the conclusion. Secondly, all gaming tests were run at 1080p max settings and used a stock GTX 1080 Founders Edition. For those unfamiliar and who might say that the 1080 FE is not a 1080p card, this is done to make sure the load is placed on the CPU, not the GPU. At 1080p, the bottleneck in our system should be whatever CPU is feeding frames to the GPU to render, not the GPU sending the frames out to the monitor. I chose to benchmark the Ryzen 3 1200 against four different processors. On the Intel side, we have the 7600K, the closest competitor spec-wise. I don't expect the 1200 to beat the 7600K in benchmarks, but it will be interesting to see just how close it can get. I also tossed in the 1200's closest price matches, the i3-7100 and Pentium G4620. For good measure, I also ran the Ryzen 5 1600 through the same tests. The AMD chips were benchmarked in the ASUS Prime B350 Plus motherboard, and the Intel chips were benchmarked in the Gigabyte Z270X Gaming K7. In our synthetic tests, we can see that generally the 1200 falls short of the 7600K and 1600, but beats out the lower end Intel models when it comes to multi-core tasks. 
Intel still does kind of have a stranglehold on single threaded performance due to their superior IPC or instructions per clock. However, this is becoming less relevant as even games now are being developed to take advantage of four cores or more. The scores posted here are even more impressive when you consider that this is a $110 part. It maintains temperatures in the high 50s and uses the stock cooler. As we move over towards our gaming related synthetics like Fire Strike and Time Spy, the same pattern continues with the Ryzen 3 1200 handily beating out Intel's low end offerings, but losing out to the i5 and Ryzen 5 processors. In Unigine Heaven, we could see that the engine is likely designed to lean on IPC rather than multi-core power, as even the Ryzen 5 1600 falls behind all three Intel chips here. Superposition is also kind of an outlier, but for a different reason. This benchmark is still so punishing on hardware that even at 1080p, we're likely looking at a GPU bottleneck. Our real world gaming benchmarks are next up, and for the most part, you'll see the 7600K kind of leaving the competition in the dust. However, if you look at that dust a little closer, you'll generally see the 1200 beating out the two other Intel chips and coming very close to or beating the scores of its big brother 1600. Some titles like Metro Last Light are clearly better off running on slightly more expensive hardware, but on Rise of the Tomb Raider, the 1200 actually posted the second best score out of the entire group. Although I can't readily explain it and it's likely more of an anomaly just in this title, it goes to show you that you can't always count out the little guys. Those are pretty impressive numbers so far, but what about overclocking? I left the Wraith Stealth cooler in place and started turning some dials. To be honest, given Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5's poor overclocking performance, I wasn't expecting much. Thankfully, I was proven very wrong. I was able to crank up the clock speed to a constant 3.9 gigahertz on all cores and be completely stable in the Ida 64 stress test for over a half hour. Temperatures leveled off at 69C and there wasn't even a hint of throttling. I figured it was time to have another go at those benchmarks and here are the results. This little Ryzen 3 chip really blew away my expectations, and I wasn't even running it in its optimal configuration. Remember earlier when I was discussing memory speeds? The AM4 platform sees a consistent, measurable, and significant performance bump with faster memory modules, and testing the 1200 with a kit of Corsair Vengeance LPX3000 confirmed this. There were frame rate bumps of an additional four to nine frames per second in every game I tested across the board, with the exception of Ashes of the Singularity, which shouldn't even really count as a game anymore. So should you buy a Ryzen 3 processor? I suppose it depends. If you have the room for an i5 in your budget, then no, probably not. Despite the same core and thread count, the i5-7600K is a more powerful CPU. It also costs twice as much, so honestly, it should be more powerful. But if you're considering a Pentium or an i3, then the answer is a resounding yes, and Intel should be worried about losing a huge amount of market share in this segment. What do you guys think of the Ryzen 3 lineup? Do you have one on your wish list? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget to get subscribed to the channel if you are not already, so you don't miss any upcoming videos or our 10,000 subscriber giveaway. As always, guys, Thanks for watching.